Welcome to Wonder Space. It's great to have you on board. My name is Steve Cole, and over the past 77 episodes, I have been asking the same six questions to amazing people from around the world. The questions orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness, and the setting for each journey is this shared window on the space station from where we see everything from a different perspective. Before we introduce our guest this week, our friends at asknature.org are going to help us to re-wonder. Not every spider waits on a web for prey to get caught. Some shun the silk and hunt on the move. For these spiders, the key to success is information gathered by hundreds of trichobothria, hairs of varying length and thickness protruding from their lanky legs and connected directly to three or four nerve cells. When an insect flies nearby, it sets the air around it in motion. The movement of the air, even the vibrations from sound, sets the hairs moving too. Since each hair is suspended in a flexible membrane, even the slightest movement is conducted right to the nerves. In a split second, the nervous system is able to combine information from the many different hairs into a clear picture of where and when the spider needs to strike in order to capture its next meal. Our orbit this week will take us across the Middle East and to experience these views with us in this ultimate window seat, we welcome Marwa al Sabuni. Marwa is an award-winning architect and author and lives with her husband and two children in war-torn homes in Syria. Her 2016 book, The Battle for Home, gained her invitations to speak to audiences, institutes and experts across the world. In her TED talk, Marwa suggests that Syria's architecture was one of the key causes of war by dividing its once tolerant and multicultural society into single identity enclaves defined by class and religion. In her latest book, Building for Hope, Marwa explores how cities and buildings might be rebuilt in the aftermath of conflict, crisis or financial depression. In 2019, she was named one of the world's top 50 thinkers in Prospect magazine. The full-length interview with Marwa can be heard on the Wonder Space podcast, which can be found on our website and on most podcast platforms. For this video orbit, she answers three of our six questions, and I start by asking Marwa to give us a glimpse into her life story so far, with an emphasis on what she is doing currently. Well, I think I'll start with my, with my age. So um, I'm currently 41. I'm an architect and author. My work uh, has come into light, I think, bizarrely because of the war in, in my country, which, uh, which took place in, in 2011. Uh, at the time, I was, I was uh, working as an architect in the studio I have with my, with my husband. We, uh, he's, he's a bit more senior than I, he's uh, eight years older. And uh, so we worked in the studio and I was studying for, for my higher education. And at the time, I was uh, pursuing my PhD. And uh, when the war happened, actually, everything changed. Obviously, our studio burnt down and uh, our city it was destroyed and um, our life was put on hold, actually. And uh, afterwards, I just, you know, I continued to, to work on my higher education, but I had the idea uh, to write a book about it, um, to write a book about the war in my city, about the role of architecture and uh, the ideas that I was exploring. And with a lot of encouragement, actually, from my husband, uh, uh, I wrote the book and uh, it was published in, in London uh, by Thames and Hudson in 2016. 
since then, I mean, my whole life changed because of that book. Uh, everything in my life actually changed, and um, it, fortunately, it has received a lot of um, uh, good press and was well received by the media and by critics. And um, uh, I, I did a TikTok as well uh, about the book, and that meant that uh, um, more exposure of uh, of my ideas and my uh, and my work happened. Afterwards, I was invited um, to different cities around the world to speak internationally about my work and about my ideas and about what it what it means to, to be an architect in Syria and what does it mean for architecture what, uh, to be a factor that is uh, enduring destruction and 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 death actually. Those years between 2016 and 2019 were really active in terms of traveling. I traveled to so many places around the world and met so many people and made a lot of good friendships actually uh, along the way, which was a blessing. Uh, and uh, led me to write another book, uh, which was Building for Hope, uh, was published in 2020. Uh, and it was uh, right in the middle of the chaos of the corona and pandemic. Uh, uh, but also, I think it also resonated with that global situation because it spoke about um, what does it mean to settle in and how we can rebuild in the aftermath of crisis, which is something that uh, every city now is uh, is contemplating. So my latest book, Building for Hope, uh, revolves around uh, five fears. And uh, I start from the fear of death and end up with the fear of boredom. But uh, in essence, the book is about uh, how we reconnect with home and how we just establish or re-establish the sense of belonging and the sense of of um, of home that we've lost in so many places around the world. Uh, how cities can recover actually uh, in in the aftermath of of not only the physical destruction like it's happening here in my country, but also the invisible destruction that is seeping through our cities uh, all around the world. I met horses later in life, uh, about six years ago, uh, and it was it was because of also the loss that happened in war. Actually, uh, my husband again is the source of inspiration in our in our family. It's just you know he thought that because we've lost so many people around us. I mean we have no relatives around us. Everyone. Almost everyone has uh, traveled or migrated, and uh, for that he th he's thought that um, we should reconnect with, especially for the children, to reconnect with uh, with something uh, or somebody out of our immediate circle, and uh, uh, that's when the horses came in. Just we went uh, to a place where they uh, they you know keep horses and uh, we met the horses there and I was the farthest person to you know to imagine I was literally afraid of cats and dogs so I couldn't imagine <laughs> couldn't imagine myself around horses but I mean horses are just fascinating creatures and the way people react about, uh, around those animals is just amazing how they you know they have they they've become also part of uh, experimental uh, curing methods i mean with with the kids or people with autism for example they show great results and uh, with elderly people and of course i can testify to this i mean with people with with the trauma of the war it's just you know it's amazing how these I, I see them as wonders of the world and, and uh, I think it's just, you know, they are amazing creatures that everyone should just try to be around. I think it's something that I tell myself all the time, I'll try, try to, to commit to. It's, it's not the easiest thing, but I mean, it's something that I honestly try to say to myself. Uh, every day and it's uh, it's whatever you do or or you are doing just try to do it not for yourself just try to do it for a higher cause or or another person and you know try not to do it for yourself
To find out more about Marwa, I recommend her 10 minute TED talk, which has been seen by over 1 million people. Her two award winning books, The Battle for Home and Building for Hope, are published by Thames and Hudson and available online. To engage with the previous 77 Wonder Space episodes, go to our website ourwonder.space. I want to thank Marwa for joining us on Wonder Space and I hope you can join us next week for more wonders and stories of hopefulness. <laughs>